Hi there, welcome to this weekend general update for uh, the 20th and 21st of April. Well, it really was an amazing week with a crash in gold on uh, Friday and, and Monday, and seemingly the US market now in correction mode. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting uh, next couple of weeks to uh, watch how the markets play out. This is traditionally a weaker time of the year, so this sort of action is not surprising, although I think the action in the gold market uh, really did take everyone by surprise. Now I'm just going to go through the quick numbers for the week, but I also want to have a look at a bit of a perspective on gold. Um, I don't think anyone really knows what's going to happen to gold in the short term. and. Uh, I think if we just have a bit of a, a, a perspective look at what may happen, then that may help you build a framework around any trading that you may be doing. So a summary of the week, the S&P index ended up dropping by um, 34 points on the week. Uh, it was a fairly decent old range, um, but did recover a bit on Friday night. So um, we may see a little bit more upside in the US market on Monday and Tuesday. But um, I think the overwhelming odds are that the US market has probably got another week or two to the downside. But as I've been saying for quite some time now, quite a lot of months, I really don't see this correction as being anything other than a fairly mild uh, affair and uh, we can get back into the uptrend uh, once it's done with. The S&P index did form a lower low, which really confirms that we're into a corrective phase. And when you have a look at the chart, um, it really does line up uh, pretty much as uh, as a bit of a false break of the all-time high. And, uh, and now we've moved uh, back into that range. Now, the ASX 200 index, um, for what it's worth, fell by 81 points on the week. Uh, there was a huge hit in resources, energy stocks and small caps. They really did get slaughtered in the first half of the week. Uh, and it was only our banks that um, that really held the index together. Otherwise, it would have been down by a lot, lot more than 81 points. Now, just looking at some of the, the bigger indicators, um, I tend to look at what the market is telling you rather than what analyst comments might, uh, you know, might say. So I look at things particularly like European bond yields and if you remember back to last year when the market was really, really nervous and in 2011 we saw Spanish and Italian bond yields above 6% and 7% respectively. Now they've come back down into the 4% area and over the last few months they've remained stable and if anything they're drifting slightly to the downside. So whilst there's a lot of people who want to tell you how bad Europe is and how it's going to crash and this, that and the other, you've just got to look at the bond market where the real professionals who really know what they're doing, where they're playing and there's no indication in the European bond market that there's anything significant on the horizon. Otherwise I can assure you that um, the bond yields in Italy and Spain would not be um, in the 4% area. US dollar rose slightly on the week, um, but not a lot of movement there. Uh, our dollar lost uh, more than two cents, which was uh, a pretty big move. So we're now back down under 103 again. Now gold lost $74 on the week after a big hit in the previous week, but that was really only after it bounced by uh, something like $70 from the low point. So um, you know, you, at one stage the, the gold um, market would have been down about $150 just on the week. So it's been a pretty decent rebound from panic oversold. We're back up to $1,400. Um, and we'll have a look at the chart of the gold indices because I think until we see the gold indices start to turn up and outperform gold, then I don't think we're at a bottom. Copper has uh, really lost a lot of ground in the last uh, few weeks as we'll see from the charts down to three dollars fifteen I, it's hard to rationalize why that is um, but futures markets in commodities these days are so heavily manipulated by vested interests that um, I'm um, I'm not really uh, focusing on that too much oil uh, was down to eighty eight dollars there's the spot uh, copper chart. You can see that it's fallen from just under $3.80 to um, just below $3.20 
and uh, that's been quite a sharp move since um, early February now just turning to gold and just some thoughts on gold first of all you've got to look at the preconditions for whether the gold bull market is still intact um, and those preconditions still exist to my mind and those major things are gold traditionally does well in when there's negative real interest rates because when real interest rates are negative as they have been now for some time um, gold uh, you know people are prepared to, to own gold because they can't really get a decent return anywhere else now there is a bit of a line of thought that um, because the stock market has been offering uh, better, better yield returns that some money's come out of gold I'm not sure whether that's the case or not um, but certainly negative real interest rates are, uh, are a positive for gold and that's still in place and it's hard to see that that's going to change we've now got the US and Japan adding two trillion dollars over the next year um, that's what they've declared and they could end up even going further than that so that's a very um, significant plus for gold there's not a single G20 nation in the world that's running a balanced budget at the moment and a lot of them are funding their deficit by the printing of money so if that's not positive for gold then I don't know what is now there is a massive divergence in the market between the paper futures market and the physical gold market so the physical buying and selling of the real thing now last week there was a 400 ton sell order in the futures market for gold now that only makes sense if that single order was designed to cause absolute mayhem in the market and people talked about whether Cyprus may have had an effect I mean Cyprus was only selling 10 tons of gold so someone has stepped up and, and put a 400 ton sell order in the futures market now anyone that wanted to um, to short sell would do it more gradually unless their primary purpose was as I said to to inflict the maximum amount of damage so there's little question that this was a, uh, a cleverly orchestrated campaign premeditated campaign to really smash the price of gold so as a consequence of that the paper market the futures market in gold is massively negative and because of that in the short term could go lower however on the other side when you look at the physical market bullion dealers around the world whether it's Perth uh, Hong Kong Abu Dhabi wherever it is India bullion dealers are reporting exceptionally heavy buying demand and long queues in the in the last week and hardly anyone is selling 95% of the people are buying now that is something that's very unusual when you see the price of gold collapse by two hundred dollars normally you would not see that sort of incredible demand to own the physical metal so there's some really weird things going on in the market at the moment and that's why it makes it a little bit hard to know whether this surge in physical demand is just an aberration and we're going significantly lower in gold or whether in fact um, that's a demonstration that we've hit the bottom the buyers are going to keep coming in and the break of support at 1550 is something that that was a one-off and it may may be done and dusted only time will tell but uh, there's certainly a lot of interesting things happening in the market so let's jump over and have a look at some of the charts the first one is the S&P 500 we're looking at a, at a big picture view we're looking at about the last seven or eight years you can see that uh, the price is forming up in a big wedge now it hasn't really got to the pointy end yet so this wedge could continue to go up for a period of time yet um, so we'll have to see on that one but as you can see there was a slight overrun here compared to the previous all-time high which was in October of 2007 so we've had a bit of a false break we now appear to have moved back into this uh, this range and I guess one possibility is that the market could pull back the bottom of this wedge at the moment is somewhere around about the 1490 area 
we could ease back even a little bit more we could pop out the other side of this wedge um, the other thing that I've been observing for the last uh, month or two is we've had this divergence on the RSI so you can see we were forming higher highs and higher lows on the price or the index and we were forming lower highs and lower lows on the RSI indicating that whilst the index was still going up it was losing momentum it was going up less quickly now if I zoom in here you can notice that we've now it's only just but we did actually form a lower low here on the 18th of April so I think it's highly likely that this is going to continue to trend down and I'm looking somewhere between 1480 and around 1510 1520 area for a low and then I believe we'll see another leg to the upside and probably see it go uh, significantly uh, into the 1600s so we'll just play it as it comes but that's the way that it's shaping up at the moment now just while I'm here I'll just have a look at the uh, this is a Shanghai market interesting when sentiment was pretty negative it did have a big jump on Friday and that really supported uh, our resource stocks on Friday as well turning to our main index this is the ASX 200 as you can see it's um, looking very sick and sad compared to the S&P over the last few months and really over the last uh, three or four weeks really hasn't done anything it's really just gone sideways while other markets have predominantly gone up let's have a look at the individual sectors on the Australian market there's not a lot of change here we've still got healthcare at the top clearly out in front we've got um, the finance index in green and telecoms in blue uh, clearly above the others but also clearly below healthcare you can see energy and materials have really been slammed particularly the miners and also we saw the small cap the XSO small cap index also down on the week so not a lot of change there but certainly the indices at the top uh, continue to outperform the resource sectors now let's have a look at gold so this is uh, gold on a weekly chart you can see quite clearly there was this uh, absolutely critical level at 1550 once that gave way it brought in all sorts of margin calls and and triggering stop losses plus a 400 ton sell order in the um, in the futures market was was probably just the thing to get the whole ball rolling it's been absolutely smashed it's over more oversold now than if you go back to before the whole gold bull market started you've really got to go back to 1997 to find the gold market on a weekly chart as oversold as it is now so these are um, pretty rare times for gold now just a big picture perspective we had 34 months to the upside if we were to pull back to the 50% level that would be 1302 now the price got to 1321 through the week so it's possible we, we could revisit 1302 and even if it pulled back to 1156 which is the 61.8 percent retracement and then bounce from there it would still not violate the fact that we've still got a bull market in gold so you need to keep this in perspective when um, when you're reading the uh, the massively negative press to do with the fact that the gold bull market is over don't give up on this market yet it is um, it is not dead yet now just looking at the daily chart you can see what sort of week we had a very big down day on Friday followed by an even bigger down day on on Monday and then basically it recovered got up above 1420 before closing it at, um, at 1400 so we'll just have to uh, wait and see where the gold market goes don't be surprised if we see another uh, another little bit to the uh, to the downside yet but the key one that we really need to keep an eye on is uh, is this spread here this is the GDX index so that's the gold miners index 
of the major gold miners in America divided by the gold price now when this index is falling that means that the stock values are falling quicker than the price of gold so they're underperforming so that line drops and as you can see there was a very heavy drop into um, October of 2008 so during this period through here into the lows of October 2008 stocks were doing far worse than gold when the line is rising then stocks are obviously doing better and the really interesting thing here is that stocks turned up about three weeks before the price of gold turned up and that happens a lot and in fact gold turned down before sorry the gold index turned down before the gold price did so it led it on the downside it'll lead it on the upside in the same way that it did here now we then had two years where the price essentially went sideways so that means that gold and the gold index are largely keeping pace with each other they could either be rising or falling but whatever it is they're doing they're doing it at the same pace now we come over into uh, 2011 and we start to see that gold stocks start to underperform gold quite significantly now as you can see it's still falling very sharply and there's no sign of that turning up yet so until that line starts to turn up and we start to get higher highs and higher lows then I don't think we've seen the bottom in gold yet so this is one of the primary indicators that I'm going to be tracking to uh, to indicate when we might have some uh, better opportunities in gold stocks so that's it for this uh, weekend I think it's going to be a fascinating couple of weeks with uh, with a correction happening and still a lot of nervousness around the precious metals market so uh, we'll talk to you again next weekend cheers